Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews. I'm your host, Christopher Brown. In April, we ventured to Regina, Saskatchewan for the 2024 Saskatchewan Urban Municipality Association Convention. Though this episode may be briefer than our standard episodes, it, its significance remains undiminished. We'll be right back after a quick message with cross-border interviews featuring Mayor Suzanne Kuka from the village of Macon. Are you passionate about local governance and municipal issues? Do you believe in the power of community-driven conversations? Then join us at the Cross Border Network, where we bring together voices from across Canada to shine a spotlight on the challenges and the triumphs of our municipalities. But we need your support to keep the conversation going. Visit crossborderinterviews.ca today to show your support by backing the show monthly or making a one-time annual donation. Your contribution will help us grow and expand our reach, bringing important stories to even more listeners across the nation. Together, we can make a difference. Together, we can amplify the voices of local communities. Together, we can shape a brighter future for all. Cross Border Network, where local matters and your support counts. Visit us today at crossborderinterviews.ca. Mayor, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, I want to start by asking a simple question, but an overarching one. Okay. Where did your sense of duty to serve your community come from? That's funny. Actually, the first SUMA convention that I ever attended, I got sitting next to a nice gentleman that worked for SASTEL. And he leaned over and says, well, so what made you get into politics? And I suppose kind of a sim similar question. And I was blindsided. I had no idea I was in politics. <laughs> um, I love my community. I am born and raised in McCoon and I left for a little while and traveled and came back and I have four children and I want to make it a place that they want to come back to too. So so what, what was it about the municipal draw though? Because you could have chosen giving back to your community through volunteerism, but you chose elected office. Well, because I had done the volunteerism, I've been, a, I've been a volunteer in my community already for 10 years and I just saw... Um, a need for some youth, I think, and municipal government in our community. And so I do not want our community. We're very small. We're 270 some residents. And so we need to sustain and we need to grow. And that was always really important to me and it continues to be important to me. And hopefully I can continue to foster that in our community. Do you mind me asking, is this your first term as it mayor? It is my first term, yes. And I did not serve in any fashion so you, before you that head first i did yeah just off the deep end for sure so four years later yeah is it what you expe expected municipal politics was going to be like? um i think because there's probably people who are going to listen to this and say oh, should i put my name forward yes what advice would you give to other municipal perspective candidates to say to be prepared to understand no, the just role. do it. Really? Just serve. Just do it. Just get involved in your community. And it's a learning curve for sure. We were actually a clean sweep government. So really? there were no previous, yeah, all new. Thank God for our CAO of 16 years. <laughs> she was like leading blind mice for the first little while and probably still feels like that. But um, I think the basic need to want to see your community do well um and then i think too with small children you see a lot of the gaps in education and healthcare, and you need a platform and so i think this has you know the the itch has really started for me in the last year to be able to use the platform that I have to try and make some of those changes for the future generations. So so it brings me to the big line of questions now that I'm going to ask. And before I do, as I always do on the show, this is a conversation between the mayor and myself. This yes. is not a motion of council, not a no. direction of council, Absolutely. not even a policy of nope. council. <laughs> this is the mayor's opinion. Yes. So in your opinion, what do you believe is the biggest challenge facing your community today? Oh, my goodness. I think... Or challenges, if there's more than one. Honestly, it sounds so easy, but it's funding. We, as I say, we're 270 residents. Our tax base is what we have to work with. That's how we have a budget. And with 270 residents, it's not a lot. So um, is it hard to make tough decisions when you have a small tax base and you have 
infrastructure challenges that you have to be faced with on a day-to-day basis? A hundred percent. We are faced with things like we currently don't have water meters on our houses. Everybody pays the same and we all just pool it together and we pay for our water. And so we have residents saying, well, you're a household of six and I'm a household of two. Like, how does that seem fair? So faced with the challenges of a hundred percent understanding that and then also looking at the facts that to put in that infrastructure and to be able to make it more fair everybody's going to see an increase so is that worth it and things like um do people do people get that like when you Um, tell people because i am I'm going down on a tangent, which I usually mm-hmm. do on this show, okay. but I, th- I, I truly believe that in Canada, people don't understand the role that the municipality plays in their day-to-day lives. They see the bills, they see what's mm-hmm. coming out, but at the end of the day, they really don't see it as, you're affecting me in a positive way. In Macron... McCoon. McCoon, yeah. sorry. I, okay. I literally, oh. as it was coming out, I was like, I'm pronouncing it wrong, <laughs> I know it already. In McCoon, do you... Do you get a sense that people understand that the decisions you are making because you don't have enough funds are in in somewhat the best interest of the entire community instead of pitting one person against another? Um, I think the short answer is no. Okay. Mostly because I didn't understand. Like the things that I've learned about my community just in the four years that I've been part of the government Um. I understand a lot more of the decisions that have been made and why they're made. I think people, because I'm blessed with a small community and these people are my neighbors and my family, I think they trust okay. a little bit more that I, I'm i doing the best that I can. And a, a council as a whole is doing the best that we can with what we have. So on the flip side of that, that challenges question, what's the thing that McCoon does right? What is the thing that when you look at and you look at the challenges that you face, you say, you know what, we do have our challenges, which every municipality mm-hmm. does, but at least we're getting this right. We're a community. And I don't know that everybody can say that. Um, and that became really um, solidified, I guess. Uh, we had a train derailment take place just outside of our community. Uh, it would be a year ago, December. And the way our community comes together it's it's like no other. We had people wanting to feed first responders. We had people wanting to take coffee to the CP rail, uh, people that were set up and camped out. We had people offering to rehome those that had to evacuate their homes. Like wow. it just, it's like no other. When people just come together, and I think everybody in my community so really feels a sense of that we have to take care of each other. Where does that come from, though? Because that doesn't come up over at night. Is it because no. you are such a small, close-knit community? I or think is there so. Something else? No, I think it is because, um, yeah, the, just the way the community has grown over the years, and it's just ingrained in the people that are the backbone of our community. Understandable. My last question for you, okay. and it's the million dollar. The doozy, okay. The doozy question. Okay. And it's a simple question. Though, okay. Because everyone knows how to answer it, and you kind of already answered it, so I want okay. you to expand. What makes McCoon such a unique place to live, to work, and to raise a family? We're in a very interesting location, I suppose. We have um, two larger centers kind of on either side of us. We're on that thoroughway, that Highway 39. So we have the ability to be where we maybe decide we want to be, but then we also get the delight of sitting on our back deck and looking at the stars and not having the light pollution. And we get the joy of knowing that if we're not at home for a couple of days, somebody's keeping an eye on our place. Or if my dog runs away, that the person across town that sees him is just gonna text me and tell me to come get my dog. Not that that ever happens on a never, 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 especially not my dog. No. <laughs> Your dogs are like amazing. Yes. They stay within the. F- yes, <laughs> best um, dogs in town. Suzanne, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you. Z, nice and no, simple. No, not as scary. <laughs> thank you so much. 
We want to thank the Saskatchewan Urban Municipality Association for inviting us to this year's SUMA convention in Regina, Saskatchewan. This episode would not have been achievable without their support. Now, if today's episode sparked your interest, hit that subscribe button now. Stay in the loop with all our diverse content covering everything from municipal affairs to our in-depth conversations on the cross-border interviews or our eye-opening exploration of local governance in the political trenches, local government at work. We are your go-to source for comprehensive municipal coverage committed to keeping you well-informed as well as engaged. But your support is the backbone of our growth and the maintenance of the top-notch content you have come to enjoy. If you can, consider backing the show. Every contribution, big or small, goes a long way in amplifying the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find the support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website today. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, but as always, just keep talking.